Now in this particular video, I'd like to differentiate between domestic waste and organic household waste. There is in fact a fine line distinguishing both particular terms and I'd like to simply highlight that in this particular video. Now first thing first, we are in fact going to put on our gloves for protective purposes because we are in fact dealing with waste. Um, this particular bin contains waste over a period of one day from a household of four persons. Now the contents of this particular bin are in fact associated with a number of different types of wastes, um, specifically referring to solid wastes. In addition to this, um, such contents are categorized as domestic waste. Now by definition, domestic wastes refer to those materials which are discarded and are in fact derived from within the confines of the household produced over a specific time period, either within a day, within a week, within a month, or within a given year. Now, domestic wastes, also referred to as household wastes, can generally include biodegradable or even non-biodegradable components. Biodegradable components or biodegradable wastes are in fact those which are largely associated with the remains of plants or even animals, or the waste derived from plants or even animals. Non-biodegradable components are largely associated with synthetic components. Um, they cannot easily disintegrate or decompose naturally in the environment. As a matter of fact, they take a relatively long period of time to decompose. So this particular bin contains paper, we are seeing napkins, um, we are also seeing boxes, all right, tetra packs, um, I'm also seeing plastic wrappers, styrofoam, all right, um, plastic bags, toilet paper, um, rolls, all right, foil, good. We are also seeing little remnants here and there. In addition to this, we are in fact also seeing a floss as well as blood glucose sugar test strips as well. Now we are actually gonna empty this bag of uh, um, organic wastes, which I usually keep in a separate um, area. And we are in fact seeing here eggshells, um, we are in fact seeing um, waste food, all right, peelings, all right, um, banana peelings that is, apples and stuff like that, onion and garlic peelings as well as, uh, you know, like I said, waste food, all right, all of them are in fact mixed together. Now in terms of the definition for organic household waste, you must bear in mind, it falls within the category of domestic waste, yes, but it is in fact a bit more specific, primarily because it refers to the remains of plants or even animals that is derived from within the confines of the home, within a specific time period, all right? These are easily decomposed and are said to be relatively biodegradable. Now we are making our way into the garden where we are taking our organic waste um, to be buried a mere two meters from a particular plant of our choice. Um, as you can see, I will simply dig the hole right, using this particular tool called a luciate. And um, once that is done, we will simply toss our waste, organic waste that is, primarily because it is biodegradable, it can be easily broken down into the hole and we will simply cover it with a layer of topsoil or compost. Um, in this particular compost, we will simply have organisms that little bugs and critters, even earthworms for that matter, and they aid in the general decomposition of the organic material, um, adding obviously fertilizers to this, after which we will cover that with the dirt that we in fact removed in the first place. And obviously um, it will break down with the progression of time. Now it's quite beneficial to bury your waste primarily because of the fact that the organisms, the soil organisms, what we refer to as edaphic organisms, both micro and macro organisms, they can actually utilize our waste, our organic waste, as an energy source, as a source of food, as a source of sustenance. All right, and in doing so, what they do, they eventually break down the organic constituents, adding humus. And in doing so, obviously, this adds to the nutrient contents within the soils, which can, in fact, be very beneficial for plant productivity. Now, take for instance, if we did not sectionize or sort our wastes, right, as we did, we simply buried the organic material a couple of minutes ago there, right? If we didn't do that, all right, that same organic material, which is, in fact, natural fertilizer when decomposed to soil organisms, 
obviously we will in fact be losing out. We would in fact be losing that medium, which can potentially be very beneficial economically for us to the point where if we contribute naturally to the environment, especially in our gardens or whatever the case may be, we don't have to spend exorbitant amounts of money for fertilizer usage, right? as it relates to adding to the soil fertility. We can encourage these sustainable practices right, that can in fact be very beneficial to the environment and of course to ourselves. Now if we have pets or if you also have animals, farmed animals, for example goats and sheep, cows, poultry for that matter, you can actually accumulate their waste in a designated spot or a designated location and you can simply utilize that later on after it decomposes or breaks down for plant productivity as organic fertilizer. Now in terms of my non-biodegradable waste, I simply categorize my waste um, in metals or aluminiums in one bag. Um, also, apart from that, I could also have um, plastic bags, all right? Some instances, people sectionize their paper waste. And also, you can sectionize your plastic bottles. Always remember to crush them simply because they will occupy less space in the bags, all right? So that's actually very important. Um, these uh, waste can simply be taken to uh, a recycling facility um, where they can obviously be reprocessed, all right, for that matter.